Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here with our first of two videos on rationalizing denominators with square roots. This video we're going to tackle when you just have a single term denominator with a square root in it. So we rationalize denominators uh, to make sure that we can see if anything is a like term with something else, also to simplify more easily. If you just have a single term with a square root in it on the bottom, how do we do that? Well, the answer is that we are going to multiply by the root in the denominator. And that is how we are going to do this in this particular video. If you are trying to rationalize a two-term denominator, check out our second video on rationalizing denominators. Uh, that's with two-term denominators specifically. Let's just jump into some examples. So in the first one, I have one divided by square root of two. Remember that we are going to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by whatever root is in the bottom. And we're gonna do that on the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction. If we don't do it to both pieces, we are changing what we started with. We want to keep the same thing that we started with. So we're just writing it in a different form. Now, doing that, 1 times root 2 on the top, 1 times anything is that thing, right? So we're going to keep root 2. And now root 2 times root 2, you could multiply the numbers underneath and say that's square root 4 which we know the square root of four, or you can think of it a different way. What is square root of something times square root of that same thing? The answer is always going to be whatever number is underneath. So if I have a root two times root two, the answer is going to be two. And now you'll notice we have a fraction where there is no square root in the denominator, and that will be our answer. For the second one, we have 3 divided by square root 5. So I will multiply by whatever square root is in the denominator there. I also need to do it in the numerator on the top. And so if we do that multiplication then, remember now the 3 and the root 5, this is an outside and this is an inside, so they need to stay separate. So it is 3 times root 5 on the top, and again, root something times root of that same thing is going to give you the number underneath. So root 5 times root 5 is going to give us 5. Again, you always want to check for any simplification that you can do. So far, no simplifying is necessary. Remember that you cannot reduce numbers inside of the root with numbers outside of the root. So we cannot reduce this 5 with 5 below. For the third problem, 6 over root 3. So I need to multiply by the square root in the denominator. We do that on the top and the bottom. Multiplying by the same thing on the top and the bottom is like multiplying by what? It's like multiplying by 1, right? When you have the same thing on the top and the bottom. So we're not really changing anything. We're just changing the way it looks. 6 times root 3, that's an outside, that's an inside. So it stays 6 root 3 there. Root 3 times root 3 should give us 3. And now if you'll notice here, if I were ignoring the root part of this, so I have 6 root 3 over 3, ignore this part for right now. If you had 6 over 3, could you reduce that? I think you could. You would call 6 over 3 reduced as a fraction. I think you would call that 2 over 1, right? And so that will give us 2 root 3 over 1, except anything over 1 is just itself, right? So we're just going to call this 2 root 3 instead of 2 root 3 over 1. So that's our answer for this one. Again, always look for things that can be simplified. For number 4, 12 divided by root 2. So I multiply by the root on the bottom, multiply by square root 2 top and bottom. Remember, outside numbers here. And inside number so that becomes 12 root 2 on the bottom root 2 times root 2 gives us the number underneath which is 2 and then if you think about if you had 12 over 2 as a fraction you could reduce both by 2 so dividing both by 2 would give you a 6 on top and would give you a 1 on the bottom and so we get 6 root 2 divided by 1 also known as 6 root 2. Okay, let's do a few more. Here we have a root on the top and the bottom for number 5, and it looks like also for number 6. 
Uh, remember to always multiply by, if you're rationalizing the denominator, you need to multiply by whatever root is in the denominator. So if I want to get rid of the root on the bottom, I need to multiply by root 7, both pieces. If I were trying to get rid of the root in the top, then I would choose the root 3. But in this video, we are talking about how to rationalize denominators, and that is the bottom of the fraction. Okay, so here now, be careful. These are inside numbers, so the multiply happens under the root. We get 3 times 7, and we do get root 21 on the top. Root 7 times root 7 should just give us the number 7. Check and make sure you can't simplify anything. This number cannot be reduced as far as a root goes. So we will leave square root 21 over 7 there. For this one, number 6, I have root 2 over 2 times root 3. So to keep everything as small as possible, I'm just going to multiply by the root on the bottom, which is square root 3. So multiply by root 3 up here as well. Keep everything the same. And now underneath numbers, we'll multiply root 2 times root 3 will give us root 2 times 3 is 6. Here, be careful, uh, 2 is an outside number, but this root 3 times this root 3 gives us a 3, right? So we actually have 2 times root 3. We had a 2 outside already. The root 3s multiply together to give us a 3. And so we should go ahead and say that this is root 6 divided by 2 times 3 is 6. So root 6 over 6 for that one. Okay. Let's look at our last couple here. Number seven, we've got three over root eight. Um, what we haven't done yet that I want to introduce here is that it's possible the root on the bottom is reducible. Maybe you can simplify it and you need to rationalize. So it turns out root eight, I can simplify that. So I'm gonna go over here and do eight. Eight is two times four. Keep the two, four breaks down into two times two. So 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and that tells me that I can pull out a 2 on the outside. So 8 is the same as 2 root 2, so I can think of this as 3 over 2 root 2. And if you're not sure how we did that, you're going to want to check out our um, simplifying square roots. Um, here I'm just using a little bit of a factor tree to get it down to the prime factors. Okay, so now we are where we were before. I need to get rid of the root still on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply by that root 2 that I have down there. Top and bottom by that. And then on the top, outside, inside, they must stay separate from one another. So we say 3 root 2. On the bottom, the 2 is outside, so I'll keep that. But these root 2s, root 2 times root 2, will give us a 2. So I get another 2 down there. And then I will go ahead and say 3 root 2 over 4. And if you'll notice, 3 fourths can't be reduced as a fraction. So we'll go ahead and leave that like it is. This one here, 5 over root 18, a similar thing. Root 18 can be simplified. So 18, you could say 2 times 9. The 2 cannot be broken down more, but the 9 can into 3 and 3. So 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. I have a pair of 3s, so I can pull out a 3 and leave that 2 inside. So this is going to be the same as 5 over 3 root 2 with that simplified denominator. We still have to rationalize though. We still have a root in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by the root 2 that's still there. Don't forget to do it to the top also. Now on the top, 5 outside, root 2. 2 is inside, so it's 5 root 2. And then 3 root 2 times another root 2. The 3 on the outside will be there. The root 2 times the root 2 will give us another 2. And the answer for this last one's going to be 5 root 2 over 6.